Howdy folks! In this video we are going to experience a duel. A duel between current rows. Two current rows enter, one current row will leave. It will be the Thunderdome of row context. It will be very exciting uh, and we are going to get to watch it happen in the next few minutes. Okay, That's a bit of a, a, a dramatic introduction, but I think it's actually appropriate for this topic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll say before we get started, this is kind of an advanced video. So if, you're, um, if you haven't watched my Elements of Dax series so far, this is going to be a pretty hard place to jump in. I highly recommend going and watching Elements of Dax. Uh, also to anybody, really. People who don't even like Dax should watch that series. It's so great. Uh, but seriously, um, if you haven't watched that yet, I'd go watch that before you come watch this. Or you can watch this and, and maybe you'll get something out of it. Uh, Either way, for the folks that are, are, have watched Elements of Dax, this should be a lot of fun. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Okay, so uh, I I am here in Dueling Current Rows, shootout at the OKPI Corral, uh, and I have a question for you, right? Well, uh, I have a question for you. Before I have a question, I have a statement, right? It's so the question's down here. Here's a statement. When you use a revisor, like Calculate or a Measure, uh, the revisor will take any value of the current row and add it as a filter before running its sub-expression, right? If you've watched the Elements of DAX series, this will be very apparent. And even if you haven't, you probably have a general sense of what I'm talking about if you, if you know Calculate pretty well. So uh, my question, the question we're going to answer, is what happens if you have two current rows? Two current rows. What do you mean two current rows? How in the world can you even have two current rows? What does it mean to uh, to have two current rows? Well, uh, before we uh, answer that question, let's just go look at the easy version here real quick. I've got two easy versions, right? So we've got a very simple data model. Uh, and uh, so this is the data table, data physical table in the data model. This is just a picture of it, right? If I wanted to see it, I could come over here and see it. But uh, here's the same picture. I just used snip to grab it. So we've got four rows, uh, two transactions for Canada and two for the U.S. And for Canada, we made $200 and $800 on these first two transactions. I don't know what we were selling, but that's how much money we made. And in uh, transactions three and four here in the U.S., uh, we made $25 and $75. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, what's meaningful here is the total Canada sales is going to be 1000 and the total U.S. sales is going to be 100 bucks. You can see that just by looking at this, okay? Now, let's go uh, uh, get the answer to that question. What is U.S. sales, or those questions? What is U.S. sales and uh, what is Canada sales in a sort of a confusing way, right? I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to twirl open measures, and let's start by looking at U.S. sales, right? I'm a bit biased. I'm here in the U.S. at the moment. So we'll look at U.S. first, okay? So uh, how do we do this? Well, um, here in the U.S. sales measure, we're going to create a one row, one column table for the United States, right? And we're going to use this bit of code right here to do it, lines three through six, right? So we're going to get a temp table that has all the countries. We're going to pass it into the filter iterator, which is just going to keep the rows where the country equals U.S., which will produce a temp table that looks like that. And again, uh, if this is kind of foreign to you, I highly recommend checking out the Elements of DAX video series, where I do it about 100,000 times, right? Okay, so... Uh, this bit of code produces that temp table with country equals U.S., right? And then the U.S. sales measure, uh, rather than using calculate to add it as an override filter, which is what you would usually do, we go about it kind of an odd way, right? We pass, we take this temp table, we pass it into sum x, and we say, hey, uh, sum x, take this temp table, the, the country U.S. table right there, add uh, this column to it, and sum up the results. It's going to sum it up because it's the sum x uh, column, and this is the definition of the column that we want to sum up. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, um, we're going to take the table and add the column to it. There's a the column right there, the expression column, which is defined by this uh, expression, sub-expression right there, right? So um, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the calculate function. Calculate is a revisor, right? One of the things a revisor does before anything else is it's going to take any values of the current row and add them as a filter, right? So before we do this stuff in here, lines 13 through 16, calculate says before I could do that, I have to freeze this sub-expression and add a filter for country equals U.S. Now, once uh, I add that filter for country equals U.S., in order to get this $100, right, uh, what I do is I add the filter for country equals U.S., and then I go here on line 14, get a uh, drive a table, go get a temp table based on all the visible rows of data, this table right here, in the data model. Well, a second ago, we just added a filter for U.S., which means uh, when I go get data here on line 14, I don't get all the rows, all four of them. I just get the two U.S. rows because Calculate added that filter. Okay, so uh, we go get that table, that temp table right there. We derive it. We pass it to the sum x iterator, uh, which is going to say, hey, I'm going to take that temp table, this temp table right here, add this column to it, and sum up the results. So for each row, we get the amount, 
So I get 25 and 75, and I sum it up, which sums up to 100 bucks. That $100 is the uh, result of this being evaluated for that cell right there. So the 100 bucks get passed to that cell right there, which is now equal to $100. And this outer sum X uh, sums up that one single value of $100 to get $100, which is how we get U.S. sales. If we look at Canada sales, it operates in much the same way, right? So Canada sales, again, we go uh, get a one row, one column table for Canada right there. Check out Elements of DAX if you want to see an example of how something like that works. We then say, we, we take this odd approach, right, where we say, hey, I'm going to pass, I'm going to go take that row or that temp table for Canada, that one row, one column table, uh, pass it into sum X where I'm going to add this column to it and sum up the results. And in that column, there's only one cell, so or yeah, only one cell, only one row. So what do we do? Well, calculate says go add any filters for the current row, so it adds a filter for Canada. Then it can go ahead and run its sub expression because it's done revising the filters. We go get uh, this derivation right there. Go get all the visible rows of data, right? Because we added a filter for Canada through that current row filtering, we're just going to get the one two Canada rows, two hundred dollars and eight hundred dollars, right? So then uh, we say, okay, sum x, go take that temp table, add this column to it, and sum up the results. So we get $800 and $200. That's the amount for each row. And we sum that up. We get 1000 which gets passed back to that cell right there, uh, which gets summed up to get 1000 bucks. Okay, so both of those are pretty easy, right? But let's go look at something a little bit harder, right? So here, we've got this uh, rather odd circumstance. And this is the kind of thing that will only make sense in a blog post. I don't think you'd ever actually do this in uh, real life. Uh, but hey, it, you know, maybe it'll make for an interesting video. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, uh, this is similar to before, but we don't know if it's going to be U.S. or Canada sales, right? And here, I blanked this out just to not give away the answer, right? Right now, it's blank. In a minute, we'll see what the actual answer is. So I'm going to hit delete, and I'm going to go ahead and comment out the rest of this code. So what are we going to do in here? Well, uh, we're going to get two one-row, one-column tables, one for the U.S. and one for Canada, right? So there's the U.S. and there's Canada, okay? So we get our two one-row, one-column tables. We pass the United States table into sum X and say, hey, go get that table with U.S., add a column to it, and sum up the results. Okay, there's country equals U.S. We're going to add a column to it and sum up the results. What's the definition of the column? Inside that column, I want you to use another sum X. So inside this cell, go get this table for Canada, right? Add this column to it and sum up the results, right? Okay, so... Uh, Inside uh, this one, there will be the calculate function. And so it's, it's going to go revise the filters, and then it's going to do some stuff. My question to you is, are we going to get uh, $100 because we're looking at U.S. sales? Are we going to get $1,000 because we're looking at Canada sales? Are we going to get uh, blank because we're going to add two filters, one for the U.S. and one for Canada? Or are we going to get uh, sales for everything for some weird reason, right? Because calculate here on line 18, it's going to revise the filter for the current row. But wait a minute, there's kind of two current rows. The current row is kind of Canada, and it's kind of U.S. So which one's going to win? Well, I'm going to hit enter and give away the answer, and then we're going to show you uh, how we actually got there. Or not we, DAX engine, the DAX engine. Okay, so I hit enter. And as it turns out, uh, Canada is victorious in this particular duel of the current rows, right? There were two current rows, one for Canada, one for U.S., and Canada won. But why? Right? Why don't these cancel each other out? Why don't we have? Why didn't calculate add a filter for Canada and for U.S. and therefore we don't see anything? Right? Well, let's let's sort of go visualize this, and yeah, well, you can see it in a bit more depth. So it's going to be the same problem, but I'm going to show it to you in Excel because I like showing people stuff in Excel. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. Hey, here we go. We're still at uh, shootout at the OKPI OK Corral, except we're in Excel now. Okay. So here's that same uh, snippet of code. I've color coded it using the color codes I like so much. Uh, we've got that card where it's a U.S. or Canada sales, and it turns out it's Canada sales because we get a thousand bucks. This is a card visual, and there is the one physical table in our data model. Okay. Now, uh, just to sort of save on time, because this is going to be a long video potentially, right? Uh, I'm going to just start by assuming you've watched Elements of DAX, or even if you have it, you 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 know enough about DAX to know that uh, these bits of code right here and there will produce these two temp tables there. And there. So this is going to produce a one row, one column temp table for country equals US, and this will produce a one row, one column temp table for country equals Canada. Okay. Okay, so we're actually going to kind of start here on like line 13 or 14, depending on how you want to say it. We've already got these temp tables. Uh, then we're going to have this big chain of some X's, right? 
Now, I want to uh, draw your attention to the fact that we have a chain of some x's, right? We've got this one, this one, and this one. Now, notice, this this will become meaningful. I don't know, it's kind of like if, if you watch a movie a second time, there's certain things you notice. If you're watching this video for a second time, uh, pay attention to the fact that uh, this sum x and this sum x have a calculate between them, a revisor between them, and this one and this one, uh, they do not have a revisor between them. Okay, that's a little uh, harbinger of things to come. Is that the right word? Ah, I don't know. It's a premonition of things to come. Okay, so how is this going to work? Well, right... We've already got these guys. So let's just start like kind of working through here. We'll start on line 14. What's line 14 going to do? Well, it's going to go get uh, that temp table, that one row, one column temp table for US, and it's going to add uh, a column to with that definition and some of the results. So let's go ahead and grab that. Oh, actually, I should say before we do, we'll do that in a second, right? Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking uh, at filter context, which we've looked at before about a million times. We're also going to be looking at row context which we've kind of been looking at before, but I've been a lot less explicit about it. Up until now, I've been describing row, text at, row context as just the current row, which I think for new people is a perfectly good way to look at it, think about it. Uh, but we're going to use a slightly more, um, I don't know if sophisticated is the right word, but technical definition of row context. Okay, uh, And when these start out, uh, because we're in a card visual, right? there's no slices or anything like that, these are both going to start out as empty for simplicity. And since they're empty and we're going to be short on space here, I'm just going to go ahead and shrink these guys. There we go. Uh, all I'm doing is shrinking them to buy myself some space uh, for all the evaluation contexts that are going to come. By the way, evaluation context just being the combination of row context and filter context. Okay, Row context being like current row. Okay, so with all that... A minute ago, I said uh, some X was going to get this temp table for US. There it is, right? Some X is going to take that temp table, add a column to it, and some of the results. Okay. Gosh, taking our time here. Okay. So there's the temp table. Uh, this is some X adding this column to it and summing up the results. Okay. So uh, what is the, uh, what's the value here for that cell right there, right? That one cell right there. Well, it's going to be defined, right? It's going to be defined by lines 16 through 26. Okay. So, uh, what does that mean for us, right? Well, let's, let's think about life from the point of view of this cell, right? So in this particular cell right here, right, if I were to tell you that the country equals U.S. for that cell, for that, I'm sorry, for that, well, for that cell and that row, you'd say, yeah, I kind of get it. In that row and that cell right there, the country does equal U.S. That makes sense. I'm not even really sure why you're asking me. But let's think about this from uh, the point of view of row context, okay? So what's going to happen is sum x is going to create a row context for each and every row in this table. And because this is a nice small table that only has one row, it's only going to have to create one single row context. And what is that row context going to look like? Right? It's going to look like that. Okay? So when we evaluate that cell right there, sum x will add a uh, row context, not a filter, but a current row that looks like that. This is a way of representing the current row has country equals U.S. in it, right? That temp table right there. Okay, so when this cell starts evaluating, it does so with a row context that has that current row in it, right? Now, uh, it, it's, it looks like a temp table right now, and I think it, that's actually a pretty good way to think of it. But uh, from the point of view of the cell, this is just a bunch of values that it can access, okay? So um, this is different than we've talked about before, or at least it's more sophisticated or more verbose or something. More complicated is a short version of it, right? Before, I've just said country equals U.S., right? So let's... Let's talk about what we might sort of a, a, a very short working definition for row context. I'll give you a longer one at the end, right? So first, a row context is only populated by iterators, right? Uh, in addition, multiple tables or current rows can be present, but they're always exactly one row tall. So here, unlike the filter context where the temp tables, uh, they could be zero rows tall, they could be five rows tall, they could be five million rows tall. In the row context, every single temp table is exactly uh, one row tall because it is always the current row, right? It's almost like a record, right? And uh, importantly, within an expression column definition, you can reference columns by name and that'll return a single value, right? Now, th that sounds, uh, I should say, this is very intuitive until you write it down in a sentence like that. All I mean is, right, uh, eventually we're going to do something like say, hey, for every single row, get the amount for that row, right? And uh, like you can see that right there. And so uh, when I do that, when I ask for a column by name, if it is in the row context, 
right? I will get that single value, in this case like a text string, or it might be a number like 25 or 75, something like that. Within a, if I have a, 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 a temp table within a row context, I could go get values uh, from a particular column just by asking for it, like they're on line 22, or also here on line uh, 10, where I get country, or here on line 5, where I get country, okay? Okay, uh, so after all that, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Another way you could think of this, another way you could think of this is instead of a table, you could think of it as sort of these uh, a set of key value pairs, right? Where I say, you know, if, if I've got a, a current row with country equals U.S., I could also sort of represent it this way, where I've got you know, data country equals U.S., the full name of the value and the value itself. Here's the text string and here's the handle. So when I ask for data country, I get U.S., right? But really, this is just another way of representing kind of the same idea that we're representing graphically right here, where we've got a single text string, U.S., and it has the name of country. Okay, so in order to figure out what's in this cell, right, we have to go uh, do all this other stuff. So the very first thing we see in there is to go get the answer for that cell, we have to get another sum x. So inside this cell right here, right, in order to figure out this number, we're going to get this table for Canada, right there, one row Canada, we're going to add a column to it and sum up the results, okay? So this is happening inside of that cell right there. Okay, good. So uh, we get this temp table. The sum x here on line 16 is going to add a column to it. It's going to add a column to it. And then sum up the results. Now, what is the definition of this column? Definition of this column. This one goes from line 18 through 25, and importantly, uh, has a calculate in it. Has a calculate in it. But before we talk about what the calculate is going to do, let's talk about what the sum x is going to do to the row context. Up here, the first sum x iterator, 14, uh, added uh, this current row right to the row context. Country equals U.S. What's going to happen in here? What's going to happen in here? Well, that sum x iterator some x iterator right there in that cell, is going to add uh, the value of country equals Canada to a, no, a new row context. And it's going to look just like that, right? There we go. Okay, so, um, oh, I'm sorry. It's not going to look like that, right? This is the one we had a second ago. What's going to happen is the sum x iterator is going to take that value and add it to the row context. And this is what it's going to look like. This may throw you off, right? So for that cell right there, if we ask what is the current row, right, well, uh, kind of obviously, the current row has a value for country equals Canada, which we could see right there. The sum x iterator added it, right? Uh, in addition, though, the, the one we had before where country equals U.S. is still there. Because if you think about this cell right here, right, this cell is happening in this row, but all of this is happening in this cell, which is happening in this row. So if I ask, you know, what is the current row? Well, the answer is really there's not a current row. There's current rows, Right, the inner one and the outer one, or the most currently added one, and the one we added just a little bit earlier. Right, just a little bit earlier. Now you may be asking, you may be asking, hey, uh, if I, you know, up here, if I ask for the country, I'm going to get the text string U.S. I understand that, but here, what happens if I were to ask in my code for the country? Would I get U.S. or would I get Canada? And the answer is, you would get Canada because this is the most recently added one. Right. Once you add uh, two columns that conflict with each other, the one that's been added most recently is what you'll get if you ask for a column. So if in the definition here I were to ask for country, I would get Canada. However, however, and this is kind of interesting, the reason I used the term earlier here to describe this, I mean, it did happen earlier. It happened back here a few minutes ago. There is a function called earlier and earliest, and the job of those functions is to handle this particular problem, where you've got a row context, like I'm describing here, row context, where you have two columns with the exact same name, and you don't want the most recent one. You want the one just before the most recent one, which you'd use the earlier function for. Or if you had three, four, five of these, and you wanted the very first one, you'd use the earliest function. Okay, so the big takeaway here is in this cell right here, there's not one current row, there's two current rows. One for country equals Canada, which is kind of the inner one, and one for country equals U.S., which is the outer one, coming from this iterator and that iterator, respectively. Okay, okay, so, 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 let's actually figure out what the uh, value is in that cell right there, right? 
So in that cell, which it corresponds to, the, the definition for it corresponds to line 18 through 25, we're going to use this calculate revisor. We're going to use this calculate revisor. Well, what do uh, revisors do? Well, they revise the filters before running the sub-expression. So this sub-expression, we're going to freeze this with our eyeballs because we're not going to run this until we revise the filter context. We need to go get a new filter context with some changes because the filters aren't what we want them to be right now because right now they're empty. Okay. So what's going to happen uh, when we do that? Right. Well, uh, first, uh, Calculate's going to start with a copy of the previous filter context. It's going to make some changes. It's going to revise the filters. And this is going to be kind of a two-part process. The very first thing that it's going to do, the very first thing that it's going to do, is it's going to perform current row filtering for the outer most current row. Right? It's not going to do them both at the same time. It's going to start with the outermost one and add that, transition that. So this is context transition. We go from the row context to the filter context. We move the temp table from here to right there. It has been transitioned. Okay, now That's part one. Uh, in part two, it's going to, well, let's find out. I think you probably have a guess at what it's going to do. Part two. right? So we've already transitioned uh, this value for the outer current row. Now we're going to transition the inner current row. Right? And it's going to transition it. Now, uh, before, when we had a conflict in the row context, right, it added it, and it it doesn't block this one. It just uh, sort of obscures it. It says, hey, if you were to ask for country, you would get Canada instead of U.S. because this is the most recently added one. By contrast with the filter context, when you revise, right, and you've got a situation like this where you're pulling in from row context, or even if you're not, uh, if you revise the filters and there was a pre-existing uh, temp table, or more importantly, a pre-existing column that is in conflict with what you are adding, uh, what will happen is it will block the old one, right? So up here we add U.S., and then when we add Canada, it says, well, wait a minute, we already had a filter for country equals U.S., so we have to get rid of it and block it and say, now we have a filter for country equals Canada. That's just the behavior that we're going to get, okay? So again, we, uh, we started with the outer one. We added U.S., Right? Then we added Canada, and it noticed it, that there was a conflict between these two filters, right? current filters, current, uh, current filters. So uh, because of that, it uh, blocked the earlier one. Okay, so now, 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 we have a revised set of filters. Right? Calculate is done revised the filters because there's no arguments 2, 3, 4, and 5, which would be override filters. We only have current row filters, although interesting, we have two of them in this case. Okay? Uh, so now we can unfreeze the sub-expression and uh, run it. Okay, after all that. Okay, so in order to get this cell, we've revised the filters. We've now got a filter for country equals Canada. Now we're going to run this sub-expression where we go get all the visible rows of data, add this column to it, and sum up the results, right? And when we say all the visible rows, we're just going to get the Canada rows, right? Because that's the only uh, filter that's going to affect it because this one has been blocked. Okay, so we go get all the visible rows of Canada, right? This temp table right here is the result of this derivation on line 21, respecting the current filters in the filter context. Okay, So now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to uh, add a column to it and sum up the results. right? And we're going to do it in a bit uh, more verbose way than we usually do it. Uh, I think, especially if you've watched the Elements of Dax series, you can look at this and pretty easily say, we're going to get 800 bucks there and 200 bucks there because that's the amount for each row. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Now we're going to just have a, a, a more mechanical way of understanding it more mechanical way of understanding it. So let's think about that first cell right there, right? That first cell right there, okay? So when we uh, think about evaluating that cell right there, what's going to happen is the sum x iterator is going to create a row context for that cell, right? It's going to create a new evaluation context by adding a row to the row context to say, hey, when you evaluate that cell, you need to do it inside of an evaluation context where there's a row, a current row for that row, where the country equals Canada and the amount equals 800, right? And it's going to look like that. There we go. Sum x added that iterator for that row, right? Uh, the filter context still looks like this because iterators don't change the filter context. Only revisors do. Uh, iterators do change the row context, and it did. It added that filter for the current row. Okay, so now when we ask the question, what is what is the uh, data amount? Well, there's the data amount right there, and it's 800 bucks, which is why we're going to get 800 bucks right there. Now, if you'd prefer to think of it as, uh, well, I see $800 right there, and that's the amount column, and so that's why I get 800 bucks. That's fine, but really, these are just two different ways of looking at the exact same phenomenon, right? This one's a little bit easier, which is why I start with it for people. This one's a bit more advanced, which is kind of why we're doing it here later on. Okay, so we get the 800 bucks. Uh, we're done uh, getting the amount for that particular uh, cell right there, but now we have to do the same thing for the cell directly underneath it, okay? 
Let's think about that cell right there. Okay. Now, uh, strictly speaking, what's actually going to happen is the sum x iterator is going to make like a thousand, or not a thousand, two copies of this evaluation context uh, and make two changes. So we saw the first one. In the second one, right, it goes and gets uh, this up here, right, and it's going to add a current row for this row down here because we're thinking about that cell right there, okay? So uh, what is the sum x iterator going to do to the row context? What change is it going to make? It's going to add a current row for Canada equals 200, right? And it's going to look like that. There we go, right? So now uh, inside of that cell, if I were to ask for the uh, amount column, I'd get 200. If I were to ask for the country, I would get the text string Canada, or more specifically the text string C-A-N in all caps, okay? Anything here in the row context is accessible as a scalar by name because of that special rule that, well, I mean, because of a couple things, but it, most importantly, because of the special rule that to get inside the row context, the table has to be exactly one row tall, not zero, not two, not 200, exactly one. That way, when you ask for a column, you're always guaranteed to get exactly one value. Let's get sort of a conflict like this, but it can handle that okay as well. Okay, so for this cell right there, the row context, right, has uh, these values of mount for, and 200, right? If you ask for a mount, you get 200. If you ask for country, you'll get US. Well, what do we ask for here on line 22? We ask for data amount, and there's data amount right there, 200. So we'll get 200 right there. Or if you prefer to think of it this way, there's the amount column, there's 200. It's the same darn thing, just a different way of looking at it. Regardless, you get 200 for that cell, okay? So now we're done defining our expression column, right? All we have to do is, uh, and all, not we, all the DAX is gonna do is it's going to add up this column uh, well, I should say it's going to set, sum up the results of this column. It's already out of the column. Now it has to sum it up to sum x function. So 800 plus 200 equals 1,000, right? That gets passed back to this cell. Then this iterator can add up that column. 1,000 plus nothing else equals 1,000. That gets passed back to this cell right here, right? Which is corresponds to that sum x. And uh, it adds it up. 1,000 plus uh, nothing else equals 1,000. And that's how we get the actual result that we're looking at right there. Okay. So... Uh, this is something, like I said before, you won't run into this production. Most of the time, if you run into this uh, uh, out in the real world, it's because you made a mistake, not because you were trying to do something clever. I guess there's probably a couple instances where you might use something like this. Really, this is just a really good way to start to understand some of the deeper complexities behind row context. Speaking of which, speaking of which, uh, if you already feel like your brain is full, you could go ahead and stop this video, and, and uh, I think you could declare victory, having understood why we got the 1000 bucks and gotten a slightly more complicated version of uh, mental understanding of row context. I'm going to take just a second and give you some definitions for row context and filter context. And I will add, um, these are still slightly oversimplified, right? Uh, I know that... Uh, the, the, the actual very intricate details of row context, I believe, are pretty complicated. I don't quite fully understand them myself. What I will tell you is this is my mental model for understanding row context, the one I use on a regular basis, and it is it has incredibly good predictive power, right? So if the, if, if the reality of this is slightly different, uh, that might be the case. But in terms of being able to work with DAX, this is a very effective way to understand row context. And also, it's very elegant. It's very easy to understand, right? Easy to kind of almost memorize and work with. Okay, so what are sort of my working definitions for row context and filter context? Okay. Row context. These are modified by iterators and nothing else. That's the only thing that can introduce a current row, right? The row context is a collection of single row temp tables. You can also think of them as records. A record I don't think is an actual uh, type of, uh, of value in, in DAX like it is in M. But you can think of them like records. They're always exactly one row tall. Not one, not two, not 200. Always one row tall, right? So it's a collection of single row temp tables. And these always act as the current row or current rows. These present values of the current rows to expressions via column name, right? So if I've got an expression column definition like that, or that, or that, where I refer to a particular column, and I don't wrap it in a, a derivation function like all or something like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the country for that particular row, get the country for that particular row, or get the amount for that particular row. Anytime I ask for a column by name, if it's present, in the row context, I will go ahead and get that value. If I ask for country here, I'll get the text string US. If I ask for uh, country here, I'll get the text string Canada. If I ask for the amount here, I'll get the number 800, right? These act as the current row. They present values of the current row to, expre to expressions via column names. 
Now, if you have nested iterators like we've got here where we've got a sub x inside of a sum x, right, what will happen is you'll end up creating uh, multiple current rows at the same time. Not a very common occurrence, but it's something you could totally do. And uh, a lot of times, uh, this actually will work just fine uh, without any kind of problems whatsoever. You will, however, run into situations sometimes like this where uh, the two current rows that you've got uh, both have the same column name in them. And if you do, uh, what will happen is the most recently added one will obscure the earlier version. However, there are functions earlier and earliest that will allow you to say, hey, don't show me the current country. Show me the one from one current row back, so to speak. Okay. By contrast, the filter context, which is modified by revisors, is a collection of any size temp tables. This is a collection of single row temp tables. This is a collection of any size temp tables. The row context, the temp tables in there act as the current rows. The temp tables in the filter context act as the current filters, right? The current filters. Each one of these is a current row. Each one of these is a current filter, assuming it hasn't been blocked, right? Okay. So these act as the current filters. And these are applied uh, to any respectful derivation to create a filtered view of the physical table, physical tables of the data model, right? So here on line 21, where I ask for uh, data, Right? That derivation is going to be filtered by all of the filters in the filter context, which is why I don't get all the rows. I just get, all the rows being all four of them, I just get the Canada rows. Right. So uh, when you have conflicts in a row context, it results in obscuring. So if you, have a, if you already had country and you add another country column, it obscures the previous one. You can get to it through earlier or earliest. If you have conflicts with filter context, when it adds a column and there's a conflict, it'll block the other column. It'll block the other co the one that was there before. Okay, okay. so uh, probably more than you ever wanted to know about row context, but I find this kind of stuff fascinating. And I think, uh, really, when you start to think in this way, you just start to see that, um, you know, uh, it really is amazing just how everything in Analysis Services Tabular, which is to say DAX, really is just built using ta uh, temp tables. The filter contest is tables. The row contest is like tables, right? Uh, the, the, the inputs are tables. The outputs are tables. Everything is a table. Okay. Well, there was a lot of stuff there. Uh, I sure do hope that was helpful. I hope it was fun. It was a pretty good duel. And I will see you next time.